What's up guys, today we'll be talking about the Lenovo IdeaPad S740. This laptop was suggested to me as a recommendation in a comment, and it matches the XPS 15 in nearly every aspect except for two big ones, while being $570 cheaper at the exact same spec. But more importantly, the base model at $1,080 is very reasonably priced, so if you're someone who is considering the XPS 15 but you're on a tight budget, or for anyone who's looking for a premium laptop with good performance and good value, I think this is a very solid option to consider. The build quality is excellent in terms of rigidity, design, and feel. The screen has some thickness to it, just like the XPS 15, making them both the strongest displays I've tested. The keyboard deck has some flex, but it's very minimal. The hinge is a one hand open, but there's also very little screen wobble. It's very well engineered. In terms of branding, there's a small Lenovo badge on the lower right corner of the lid and the interior, but the entire laptop is finished in a dark gray anodization. Very minimal, very clean, I think it looks great. There's a full-size keyboard with a number pad as well as all of your media controls on the function row. The only thing that's missing is brightness control for the keyboard backlighting, and it looks like you can only turn it on or off in their Vantage software. The layout is great, key travel is quite shallow, but they're fairly tactile. There's also a fingerprint sensor below the bottom right of the keyboard. I was also able to get comfortable with my taping speed and accuracy right from the start, so very easy to get used to, no issues typing, but it's not the most comfortable keyboard that I've used because of the shallow key travel. The trackpad uses a frosted glass surface, very smooth and nicely weighted. The button clicks are relatively loud, so it's a little bit awkward when you start clicking away with people around you, like in a library. Tracking accuracy is great, and my only issue is occasionally when I click on something, the cursor will jump slightly to the right, and it just gets a little bit annoying after a while, but good trackpad overall. When I reviewed the XPS 15 7590, so that's the 2019 model with the 4K IPS panel, I measured that to be the very best 15 inch screen for image quality and content creation that I've tested. This thing gets right up there among the very best of any laptop, except one step down. It's a 4K IPS touchscreen with HDR 400 support. It's comfortable outdoors in terms of brightness, fairly good contrast and very good color accuracy out of the box, but the color gamut is quite weak. I've also compared it to the XPS 15 and the 15 and 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro, which are some of the best screens that I've measured personally for content creation. Those two are quite a bit better, but they're also far more expensive. And for the price, the only other display that matches this that I've measured would be the Huawei MateBook X Pro. They are very close in image quality. The speakers, however, are acceptable at best. They get fairly loud and they're quite detailed for bottom firing drivers, but the base is totally gone. Now, some laptops are actually painfully bad, like the MSI GS75, but these are acceptable even if they do kind of suck in audio quality. Port selection on this is probably the biggest weakness of this laptop, and same goes for the XPS 15. There's a power in, headphone jack, one USB-A, two Thunderbolt 3, and one micro SD card slot. I would say that this is slightly better because it uses two Thunderbolt 3 ports where the XPS 15 trades one of them for an HDMI port. If you want to get inside the laptop, you're going to want a suction cup. There's a bunch of clips holding it down with no real leverage anywhere. But once you get inside, you get access to the RAM, the single M.2 slot, and the Wi-Fi card, which by default comes with the older Intel 9560. But it's like $20 to upgrade to the Intel AX200 for Wi-Fi 6. My unit is running a 6-core CPU and a GTX 1650, and gaming performance is good. For 1080p gaming, it handles most of everything if you lower the settings a bit, but the thermals aren't great. For one, there's no manual fan control or any sort of thermal profile. The fans do spin up nice and fast under load, but I have noticed that occasionally the fans will decide to spin up when the CPU isn't even hitting 70 degrees, and that's not really something I want to happen in a library. It's kind of awkward to have your fan spinning in a quiet place. There's a 71 watt hour battery inside which will last you about 6.5 to 7 hours of battery life with light use. 
Not very impressive given that a lot of higher end laptops have 80 watt hours and the XPS 15 uses a 97 watt hour battery, but I would expect to comfortably achieve eight hours with the 1080p screen though. So I like this laptop a lot, and I think if they increase the battery capacity to achieve eight hours with the 4K panel, they improve the thermals and they expanded the port selection, this could become one of the best all around laptops on the market. And for anyone contemplating on getting the XPS 15, I think this is a much better option for a lot of people because the base model at $1,080 is very nicely specced. But if price was no issue, I would probably go with the XPS 15 just because of the screen and the battery life, which are quite a bit better. Maybe not five to $600 better, but it is noticeably better. Okay, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.